In this visit, I'm going to talk about the Comprehensive Metabolic Profile, which is a set of blood tests run on a single sample that doctors use, along with a complete blood count and urinalysis and sometimes a thyroid test, to get a picture of the body's functioning. Please note that the normal values I've given on these slides are from the lab I use most often. Different labs will have slightly different normal values, so you'll have to check on the lab results from your sheet uh, to see the normal values that apply to your tests. When the doctor looks at your report of the complete metabolic profile, he organizes it in his mind according to body systems or possible diseases. The sodium, potassium, chloride, and total carbon dioxide measure the salt and acid base balance of the body. The glucose level is how we diagnose diabetes. The BUN, creatinine, and BUN to creatinine ratio tells us how the kidneys are functioning and also can give us an idea about water balance and possible heart function. The calcium and phosphorus give us information on a possible endocrine disorder called hyperparathyroidism and also can give information on possible bone disease and malabsorption. The total protein, albumin, globulin, uh, all can point to a liver problem, a kidney problem, or an immune disease. The total direct bilirubin can be abnormal in liver disease and in some blood diseases. The alkaline phosphatase, LDH, AST, ALT, and GGT can be abnormal in liver disease. Now let's go over the tests in somewhat more detail. The serum glucose is how we diagnose diabetes. If the glucose is 126 on a fasting blood draw, meaning the blood was drawn first thing in the morning after an overnight fast before you ate any breakfast, then you have diabetes. Now that's assuming that when we repeat the test, we get the same results. It needs to be abnormal more than once. The uric acid is how we diagnose gout. The BUN, blood urea nitrogen, can be abnormal in kidney disease, dehydration, and heart failure, as well as malnutrition and liver disease. The serum creatinine is a measure of kidney function. The BUN to creatinine ratio can give information on the possible cause of the kidney dysfunction say heart failure or dehydration or decreased kidney blood flow. The serum sodium can be increased in dehydration. The serum sodium can be decreased in diuretic therapy and in the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, abbreviated SIADH. The serum potassium can be increased in adrenal insufficiency and acute renal failure, as well as with an inappropriate combination of medicines. Potassium can be decreased in primary aldosteronism, diuretic therapy, and renal tubular acidosis. The serum chloride can be increased in dehydration and renal tubular acidosis, and it can be decreased in congestive heart failure and in primary aldosteronism. The carbon dioxide can be increased in primary pulmonary disease, such as severe COPD, and in primary aldosteronism. It can be decreased in metabolic acidosis, such as occurs with diabetic ketoacidosis. The serum calcium can be increased in an endocrine disease called primary hyperthyroidism. It can also be increased in malignancy. However, most of the time when a person has a high serum calcium found unexpectedly, it's simply due to hyperparathyroidism, which can be treated. Now, we can also uh, have a decreased uh, serum calcium in hypoparathyroidism and in vitamin D deficiency. The serum phosphorus can be increased in acute or chronic renal failure 
and decreased in malabsorption and vitamin D deficiency. The total serum protein can be increased in multiple myeloma and sarcoidosis, and it can be decreased in chronic glomerular nephritis, which is a type of chronic renal disease. The serum albumin can be decreased in liver disease, cirrhosis, and in nephrotic syndrome. The total globulin and the albumin to globulin ratio can be increased or decreased due to a number of causes. And there's a special visit albumin globulin medical lab test that's coming up that'll go over this in some detail. The total bilirubin can be increased in hepatitis, hemolytic anemia, and in blockage of the bile ducts, either the bile ducts within the liver or within the bile duct that drains the gallbladder and the liver. That's what we mean when we say cholestasis or biliary obstruction. The direct bilirubin is increased in the same things as the total bilirubin, but the ratio of direct to total gives us clues as to the causes. One of the most common causes of a mildly elevated total bilirubin found on a routine CMP is a syndrome called Gilbert's disease. Although it's called a disease, it's common and it doesn't cause any liver damage or any health damage. The alkaline phosphatase can be increased in bone disease and liver disease and decreased in malnutrition and celiac disease. The LDH lactate dehydrogenase can be increased in a number of diseases, including heart disease, liver disease, pernicious anemia, uh, hemolytic anemia, folate deficiency, sarcoidosis, pulmonary embolus, malignant tumors, muscle disease, kidney disease, and others. The AST, ALT, and GGT are often called liver enzyme tests. They don't measure liver function, but rather give evidence of liver damage, but they can also be elevated in damage to other parts of the body. They, they, they can be increased in liver disease, muscle disease, pancreatitis, and the GGT can be a sensitive indicator of alcoholism. If you'd like to learn more about the individual tests that we talked about, check for the visits on each of the individual tests that will go into greater detail about what an individual test might mean. Well, that's it for this visit. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.